Hey, it's great to see all you guys uh, live here on LinkedIn Live. Um, can't complain uh, with the week here in Chicago. The weather's been going really, really well and uh, pretty happy with all of that. So it's great that you guys are joining us. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, first off, I just want to say happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, it's a great day to really just identify St. Patty's Day, which is great. And so I also want to make sure that you guys are all having a great week. Um, it's a great time to be alive in this world. Um, the Fed only raised the interest rate uh, a quarter um, point, so that was good. And um, today I wanted to hop on and just really talk to you guys about self-awareness uh, in leaders. You know, from gaining the deep respect from your team members as you're trying to lead them to continuously deliver measurable business results. Effective leadership across industries, being consistent, right? And there's a, a myriad of different characteristics or personas that are out there and also strategies and skills. However, one trait proves universally in leaders of all kinds is self-awareness. So what is self-awareness? You know, to start off, I want to really just like uncover what self-awareness is. It's pretty self-explanatory when you think about it. It's the awareness of one's own personal or individuality, right? So the ability to look inward on oneself, but it's not always as easy as it seems to be completely aware of oneself, right? I mean, we know that we can we, we know what we sound like. We know what we look like. Uh, we know what we want, what we're up to in our life. We know how others may perceive us, right? But self-awareness is an effort. It is a conscious effort to invest in understanding who we are, who others are, our universal rules that we apply in life, and our commitment into the future and beyond. For leaders that are struggling to develop self-awareness, it takes work and willingness to recognize the reality is truth. Yeah, it's the ability to be, I don't know, perceiving in tune with oneself and your emotions, as well as having I guess, a sounding board in situation awareness. See, when we're in these type of situational awarenesses, really will be a sounding point for us to really just step into. How often do we do that? Can we use these powerful tools that are in our backpack for leading a team? Do we know that we have a backpack? Do we have a, a, a plethora of tools that we can actually reach in and, and actually get? So not only does self-awareness work to make leaders more conscious of their own actions, their own emotions, their own biases, it helps them have greater emotion with their self, peace. And when we're talking about all this, how about emotional intelligence? having better emotional intelligence in the process. See, developing self-awareness as leaders will strengthen not only the individual performance, but the organizational performance as well. See, ultimately, the immense amount of understanding, trustworthiness, and wisdom that self-aware leaders possess equips them, equips us with the critical skills for success. So when we look at this, we have to really just take a dive, a deeper cut into the characteristics of self-awareness with those leaders. So what are the character, characteristics of that self-awareness in leaders? Well, for one, there's humility. 
you'll find humility when you see this, which is one of the most important characteristics and traits associated with self-awareness in leaders. See, hum uh, humility is the correct understanding of oneself, and the correct understanding leads to a better understanding of others, because once we love ourselves, we learn better to appreciate others as well. See, no one knows everything, not about yourself, definitely not, not about others either, not about the world, but it's something we should strive to develop and learn as we become self-aware in our own leadership skill. See, practicing humility in the workplace requires vulnerability, but it helps create an environment where everyone feels comfortable in acknowledging their own flaws and asking for help, even in some cases when it's not truly deeply needed. You just need help to just really take a, a cut at something. See, in addition to being humble, Self-aware leaders consistently look to improve. Self-aware leaders recognize their own strengths, their own weaknesses, and any hidden biases that may be lingering. And they take accountability for them, each and every one of them. And they consistently ask for feedback in order to improve themselves, improve their teams, and the company that they work at. Whether by requesting a 360 degree feedback from, from your team members on a regular basis or by inve investing into a continuing professional development program, self-aware leaders recognize the value of continuous learning and growth. See, self-aware leadership knows that they are not the perfect person. They're just human. See, by being human, you're imperfect, which is the first step to self-awareness and into self-improvement. See, we have to realize that we're not perfect, that there is something better. There's another level. And when we get to that level, there's another level. You know, if you have any questions or comments, concerns, please put them down in the chat and let's let's get this conversation going in a few minutes another way leaders can work to become more self-aware is by making a conscious effort to forgive yeah give up that cross you've been bearing those people that wronged you in the past family or or in business forgive them write a letter to them don't necessarily have to give it to them or you can give it to them. You could call them, right? It doesn't, you don't necessarily have to do it. I know it's, it's cleansing for me. They forgive themselves and others. They recognize that we don't live in a world that is perfect and that they know that no one's going to be perfect. There's only one man on this earth that walked it that was perfect and uh, he's here in spirit. So, when we look at this, the organizational benefit of self-awareness and leadership, how do we get there by becoming more self-aware? And subsequently, we recognize our strengths. We recognize other people's strengths. We recognize other people's weaknesses and the hidden biases that leaders gain the trust of their team members and increase their own credibility as well. See, additionally, a culture of self-awareness advances learning and development by promoting the value of continuous growth and development of said employees and yourself. When people are self-aware, they can put them, themselves and those tensions on the table and no one gets hurt because it's recognized that everyone is trying to improve. The results in a culture of continuous improvement. See, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Learning and development of professionals should be encouraged. 
we should be encouraging our leaders to use a 360 degree for feedback and surveys on a regular check-ins with their team. See, members and self-reflection really helps them become more self-aware. And every time that we learn that maybe we're coming off this way or we're saying this a lot, or maybe it's demeaning, we're not really acknowledging people. We need to be aware of these things. These things need to be brought forward. See, most of us, we don't wanna hear that. We push, push that away. We don't wanna hear the negative about how we may be coming off. Because we're okay, we're whole, complete, and perfect, right? Absolutely. But if we open ourselves up to that feedback, we can be more of who others want us to be. And with others comes possibility. See, if you're trying to create possibilities in your world, as if in your small world, if it's just you by yourself running your own company, that world's big for you. The more people that you get in, how do we get that feedback from those other individuals? Or do we just want to turn a deaf ear to that? I don't want to hear that. See, the 360 is really going to help us. And the more people that we have, the more 360s we need. We need to hear that information so that we have ability to change those things if that is needed. In some cases, we can't change ourselves. In some cases, we can't. See, learning and development can really help in these areas, right? And, and we need to encourage those leaders to use the 360 and the feedback on a regular basis. In addition to helping leaders develop that uh, professionalism, that, that, that personal self-awareness helps them provide that positive impact on their teams as well. For one, teams led by a self-aware leader are less likely to experience internal conflict amongst their team. A culture of self-awareness creates a space where people can address their tensions in a more open and less friction-based way. We need to strive for more. I strive for more each and every day. Self-awareness as a leader strives for more than just an individual success. See, it's not just about me. It's about us the team, our customers, our carriers. That's what self-awareness really brings. See, self-aware leaders, they want to use their experience and passion to enact change on large scales, taking on things much larger than themselves in order to make a lasting difference. However, leaders must first use their sense of self-awareness to objectively determine areas they need to improve in. See, we need clarity on what it is. And we need clarity on what it's not. What is not true? Then, then and only then, we must be willing to embrace and accept and look at the resources to make our lives greater. Make the lives of our family better and greater, our teammates better and greater, and make the world greater along the way, which is our responsibility as self-aware leaders. See, it's at our core. Self-awareness offers leaders far more than another tool for success. It helps them remember why they wanted to become leaders in the first place. It helps them to discover and live the impact they want to have, not just on their team members or even their organization, but the world. I mean, really, that's something that gets me out of bed in the morning. And that is truly a leader worth following. He or she is definitely worth following when they have these characteristics. Now, when I say the world, it can be literally in your city, your state, your neighborhood, and so forth. Wanting to have an impact 
on something bigger than yourself, gives you a purpose in your life other than just work and family and friends. And it's encompassing it all, all of it. For example, at Becker Logistics, we made a social promise to donate a dollar for every single load to help the homeless in our communities. We are continuing that this year, but we're also helping other projects as well. Last year, we only worked with one organization to really help in a community, and we made some major, major milestones. In the trenches, we were able, able to help a lot of people. So the project that we put together was called Humanity for the Homeless. And if you want more information on that, you can look at humanityforthehomeless.org. That's humanityforthehomeless.org. For every single shipment, and we're moving something in the area of 450, 500 shipments a day, a dollar is donated every single day with your shipment, with the shipment that we, our team, is advocating for. So as we go forward, let's make a difference with sustainability within our communities, with the efforts that we're doing and what we're up to. So before I conclude, I just wanna see, is there any comments, questions, concerns out there? So let's take a look at this. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. How do you help managers build their self-awareness? Oh, this is great. First off, uh, to build someone's self-awareness, you have to help them identify their current state. What is their current state? Where are they? How do they perceive the world? What are they dealing with? Second is help them design their desired state. What's the desired state where they want to be? It's like we're, on, we're living here in Chicago and we want to go to Jamaica for vacation. Jamaica would be the desired state. The current state is here in Chicago. You know, it's probably 62 degrees, 65 degrees here in Chicago right now. So we really don't need a jacket, but in Jamaica, I wouldn't do too well with the sweater on. So we need to change that. You know, I could take the sweater off and I have a t-shirt on underneath. That'd be great. But it's more than that. It's helping them discover their current state and then showing them the desired state. Some will take that. Some will. Um, some won't. And if I can get to at least 80% of the people that I coach, and help them get to the desired state where they wanna to get to, then fantastic. And when they come up with that desired state where they wanna to get to, they, they now can see the steps that they need to do to, in order to get there. So look at current state and desired state, and that will help them. Let's get into this next one. This is from Mark, uh, good to see you, Mark. So many blind spots to learn about and understand. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, we go through life and we're given a whole bunch of skills and, and tools that are, you know, our, love our parents, right? They gave them to us. And then they gave us the skills to, uh, to go out into the world and really make a difference in the world. But maybe they, they fail to give us some of, some of the tools that we need. Well, it doesn't stop there. It never stops. We have to find and discover these other tools that we need as well. And maybe we have a mentor or a coach, um, a colleague, um, a leader that can help really fill that cup up and give you or give you more, more skills so that you can see these biases or blind spots, scotomas, so that you know we can learn more. But if our, our cup is fully, fully filled and we can't put anything in our cup, well, then we're shunned out and growth stops. Self-awareness no longer exists. Uh, good one, Mark. Um, and then uh, Dwight, good to see you. Thanks for the hi. So that's it on um, questions. So let's just conclude this. You know, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Really, the self awareness is a trait that everyone should strive to have and develop, but it's especially useful in today's world as leaders with everything that we've gone through for the last two years. And trust me, there'll be something else. It's not like gone away. Before leaders can manage others, they must effectively manage themselves. Being able to understand yourself is paramount because when you have self-awareness, you have the knowledge that enables you to make better choices, 
So what's ignorance? Ignorance is the lack of knowledge, education, and awareness. So how do we become aware? How do we educate ourselves? And how do we have that knowledge? So, you know, thank you so much. Put your comments in there. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Share this with your community. Self-awareness is not the only trait of a great leader, obviously, but definitely one of the most important ones to have. I continue to develop my self-awareness and strive to be the best leader I can possibly be. And I exercise leadership as my natural self-expression each and every day. Ask yourself, are you a self-aware leader or could you do more? With that, I want to wish you a blessed week. I hope you move on and have a great week and we can always do more. We can always learn more and we can always grow more. God bless you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.